Hello, today we're continuing our three-part video series with different manga effects throughout the drawing process. In my last video, I made the background using 5-point perspective, and in this video, I will turn my character into a hologram using screen tone techniques on Clip Studio. So let's start by focusing in on the line art of our character. The goal of the hologram effect is to make the object look like a light flashing, so I want to make the black line art look like it is not a solid surface, but an image projection. To do this, I want to make the black lines lighter. Using only black and white, the way to make the lines lighter is by changing the value of the black and white lines through screen tone. So to convert into a lighter screen tone, we have to convert the line art into a different color. Let's click layer property, then the fourth icon for layer color, and then you can change it to a darker or brighter color depending on how light you want your screen tone. The value of the screen tone is going to change based on the color you use. So I'm going to settle on a dark blue to make the line art still pop, but still have a faded effect. Once we have that, I'm going to copy this layer and then create a new layer with no layer color effect to merge with the colored line art layer. This will allow us to turn back the layer into a normal layer while maintaining the colored line art. After we've merged the layers, I'm just going to see how the color will look in grayscale by making the expression color gray instead of color. As you can see, the line art is now a lighter gray compared to the previous black. Instead of actually going with the gray color, we'll have the same effect but with black and white using screen tone. We can do this by converting the colored line art into tone by clicking the third icon on effect under layer properties and then changing the density from using the color of the image to the brightness of the image. This usually leads to a darker value in screen tone. Then you can play with the tone frequency to play with how the hologram light disperses the image. I like making my tone frequency high so that the lines still pop a little bit more, but you can make it less frequent to add more white space between the particles. After converting the line art into screen tone, I'll add screen tones for shading. I usually like to add two to three densities of screen tones, but that's a personal preference. The more densities you put, the more variation and shading you can get to make it look more realistic. This jumpsuit was inspired by some Evangelion pictures that I found and then just me playing around with the character design. But anyways, after putting down the shading, I like to smooth out the edges with the tone scraper. I also scrape some tone around the figure to show that the light is casting a wider image than just the character, but you don't have to if that's not your preference. After doing this, the last part is to add some streaks of light where the cast image breaks. So here I'm just adding vertical parallel lines to give a sense of direction of where the light is coming from and where it's going. And then we'll add more splotches with the droplet tool to add more areas where the hologram breaks. And after that, you're done. As a quick summary, you can do a hologram effect by changing black line art to a brighter color and then converting it into a screen tone. From there, you can add screen tones for shading and coloring and make impressions of light radiating with parallel lines and splotches of white to show random breaks in the hologram. You can change this technique as you see fit, and if you feel like you still want more pop in your line art, you can add back the regular line art. I hope this helps with any high-tech scene in your manga or comics. To wrap this video up, in our next video, we will use Clip Studio to warp images and text as we finish the final illustration. With that, we wrap up our video. If you found this content helpful, please consider leaving a thumbs up below and subscribe if you want to see more content about creating comics and manga. If you want to follow my other social media and work, 
the links are in the description. Finally, if you have any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll see you guys next time.